We've brought one of the hottest mid-size sedans to one of the coolest review spots here with Thomas and Autogefühl with the Mercedes-AMG C63 e-performance in this new generation. So the new C63 AMG has electrification. What does it mean? Let's find out together in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go! Here with the front vertical fins, true AMG grille, Panamericana they call it, because here it is wide in the lower part and in the upper part. Usually it's the other way around, but this the special AMG styling. And also now with the AMG badge here on top of the hood. And on the hood, we also have a special hood here for the C63, for the new C-Class generation in the top spec here. These are real vents here on top of the hood. The vents on the side, they are actually just fake. 4 meters 84 or 191 inches is the length here of the C63. And wait a minute, if you now think, isn't that a little bit longer than the usual C-Class? Yes, it's true. It's a little bit about the spoilers in the front and in the rear, but also even the wheelbase. So the wheelbase has been increased by one centimeter. That's just a tiny little bit. And you must, might ask yourself, why such an effort? Yes, this is a big technology effort, this vehicle here overall. More to that to come. Wheels in 19 or 20 inch. These here are the 20 inch wheels in this spider style in black. Yeah, really very impressive. This car is also equipped with the carbon fiber pack. That means that the side mirrors here have the carbon fiber covers. Also here the lower side spoilers, so a very massive look also has become a wider track so always a bigger stance here on the road for the c63 what do you think about the design tell me in the comments very modern tailings here with this segmentation that looks really cool and then also this logo that has red you know background basically pretty cool and about this real spoiler when you also think about the system or the c43 then it starts there with two different kind of spoilers in two different sizes and the bigger one is the standard one for the c63 whereas this one has the optional even bigger one and that is this one and then there comes the carbon fiber package on top <laughs> and then you have the bigger spoiler with carbon fiber would you go for that one here or is it too much tell me then in the lower part Auto Crew fake exhaust police AFAP alert for the fake exhaust because the real ones are on the inside. Yeah, we'll listen to them very soon. First of all, as for the technology, this one here now, this generation equipped with rear axle steering up to 2.5 degrees in the opposite direction. The AMG models are always a little bit limited because of bigger tires. The normal models by Mercedes can have even, you know, stronger steering in the opposite direction. Still, it increases agility and also maneuverability in the city and so on. And another color for you, even more sinister here in the graphite gray Magno. This is the matte color. You also hear it when you hug the vehicle. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah, always has a very strong effect. But this one, yeah, almost black, isn't it? Would you prefer this even more sinister look here also with the black wheels and of course even more contrast than whatever is colored here once again the red brake calipers. This is the car key here with the AMG badge here and also at the other side. Then let's open the door for the door closing sound. Yeah, it sounds actually quite solid, cool. Inside of the doors then, in this new generation you also have a new design especially here of the seats control and here they don't give a haptic feedback. So that, that way I do control the seats, but I don't know what I'm doing basically. So this has been better in the previous generation, I think. Optional Burmese sound system. That one has a really, really nice sound. And then we have a nice steering wheel with microfiber at the sides here and a typical AMG styling with the badge and also with the two-spoke design of the steering wheel. Then seats, you either get normal sport seats or these here. These are the optional bucket seats. And in both cases, on most markets, they will be available also with uh, with micro cut microfiber on the inside. This will be a more comfortable solution, also more breathable and better for race track driving and so on. This is the optional animal skin equipment. Um, it might depend on the market if the microfiber is available. Available. These bucket seats here, they hold you better tight on the race track, but they are less comfortable than normal sport seats. So I would advise you, when you're not used to car on the race track, then go for the normal sport seats. 
here with 189 or 6 foot 2 still a lot of headroom left there's also a panoramic roof available this one has not built in uh, one yet at the moment so here I assume up and down in and out and yeah you still feel you're sitting in a c-class but especially the bucket seats make everything like ready to race interior overview real design focus look at that and here the carbon fiber background you can pick for this vehicle that's actually pretty cool and the ambient lighting integration look at that here you know the central lines and also inside the air vents even more so at night or when it's darker then it shines all the way it's really really cool and you can of course also change the colors of the ambient lighting um, here for example in the AMG red is of course really cool and what's always a nice effect is when you switch the temperature here then you can see it in the air vent actually that it turns blue or red depending on if you go warmer or colder so very nice emotional things to play around with indeed and this vertical infotainment screen here this is the map we're filming around Malaga southern Spain here today uh, well not today all these days so there we go and this is actually quite responsive and the main menu looks like this so it's actually a quite good overview and you have special AMG performance gauges like energy flow meter shows also where the battery is exactly and then you also have some telemetry data here it's a very very nice visualization and here the IWC clock this is a new AMG feature here new AMG vehicles it's actually very fancy and have a stopwatch right here replacing basically old analog clocks tell me in the comments do you like analog clocks in vehicles or would you also fancy this you know like I would say like play feature or something but it's, it looks definitely cool doesn't it and then even more so you also have this track pace app and there we will use it also on the track actually there you can pick a race track and then for example on the race track there are certain marks on the race track where to best use the boost mode on a straight or something and we'll test it on the Ascari race track in southern Spain today and this is the Apple CarPlay integration also here of course and with the Google Maps works with um, Apple CarPlay Android Auto and both wired or wirelessly you can actually pick what you prefer then and the driving mode selector by the way is in the lower part here press it here and then you can switch to different driving modes like this sports mode, of course or we will use the race mode later on on the race ring all the different um, you know settings here suspension is adaptive suspension that gets stiffened up then so uh, yeah that's it looks pretty cool but even more so when you can choose it at the steering wheel because this is an easier function here directly choosing it at the steering wheel that you can better do while driving and driving electric is also possible then you definitely usually it starts electric you know when that you don't wake up your neighbors unless you want to <laughs> so um, but then you can also um, pick that but again it's not a high all electric range like in my 10 12 kilometers six miles or something is the pure electric range overall then here on the left side you can also for example just change the suspension mode the rest on the steering wheel here for example for cruise control or then changing something in the digital instruments is always hashtag capacitive bs it works very well when you're stationary but while driving it's a little bit tricky browse through the digital instruments and you have different gauges um, there's also this normal classic view available but then also sport super sport or the track pace and this centers everything then for example on the gear change and so on pretty pretty cool and you can also adjust what you want to have in the head-up display for example here there's a standard view um, or also this race optimized view with the rpm focus and so on and here we go you can see this is um, you know then the rpm focused view for example super sport view standard where you also have some gps guidance but that only works with the car internal gps or just a minimized view um, yeah but you can also set the height and the brightness and so on then high gloss black at the middle console yeah i think no one is really a fan of that aren't we <laughs> let's open that one and then you have two usb-c chargers in the front also inductive charging pad you can also just leave your phone here for example and these cup holders here um, you can like fold them out like this bang to the moment time that's cool right um, but i found that these bottles are not being held 
that tight, you know, like here. And even if I would go for a bigger one, for example, yeah, it's, it's not ideal. And then you have this split armrest like this and two more USB-C chargers and more space. Rear doors also with a satisfying door closing sound, really cool. Then also nice build quality here on the inside of the rear doors. Also cool design, but again, high gloss, black use. It looks cool when it's clean and without scratches and so on, but then later, hmm, I don't know. Then the rear seating area, really dark here. Everything in black. In this case, yellow contrast stitching, but you can also get other contrast stitchings if you like. As for the leg room or knee room here, this is the normal C-Class review. That I did have, have some leg room. So sometimes these um, sportier seats, the bucket seats, sometimes you have more, sometimes less room, depends on how voluminous they are. But here probably also, um, yeah, I'm not sure, like also the angle of the seats will be different, but I feel that with the bucket seats, I have even less leg room. Um, it works for tall adults, but closely, you see. But yeah, I feel that the normal C-Class with the normal seats or the usual sport seats would have even a little bit more leg room. Headroom works here. Also, when I lean backward, I'm touching the ceiling with my hair, but yeah, it works actually. It's not too uncomfortable here in the rear. You can use it with four toy adults. Isofix also at the outside parts of the seats. Substantial middle tunnel, so sitting in the middle part here is, yeah, for emergency situations. Not for the racetrack, definitely. <laughs> then folding down this one here, also nice build quality. This is like a um, tablet holder, but you know, with the case, it gets really close with the smartphone, I think too wide. So, and then here, some cup holders. There are also some, that looks quite fancy, right? Here, it's like, um, it looks a little bit like, like, a, like a ski lift or something, doesn't it? <laughs> so what about the trunk? Is there any compromise? First of all, here, cabin trolley. Does it also fit in a vertical way? No, it doesn't. And that's a problem. And you can see this is here the battery, you know, so you lose height and it, especially here with that step. So you cannot push it through easily. You always have to lift up then the luggage and then push it through to have even more space here. So not an ideal solution at all. The length is okay with a meter of 40 inches and also the width with a meter of 40 inches, that's fine. But you definitely have this limited height at about 40 centimeters or 16 inches. And then, yeah, once again, this big step. What's cool is that you can easily fold seats from here like this. That is a very cool solution. But the thing is then here, you once again have this massive step from the battery then to the seats. The new C63 is also available as the Estate, the, or the wagon. In Germany, you always call it T-Model, like T-Model, listen and repeat, T-Model. The driving features, almost the same, even the acceleration figures at 3.4 seconds. So it's just a little bit different as for the weight in the rear, but more or less you won't feel a big difference while driving. Yes, you've seen here that 20 inch wheels are in the bright styling, the normal silver styling. So which team are you? Team bright wheels or team black wheels? I love, by the way, the like this BBS 90s uh, styling design. I just love it. Um, or spider design, you can also call it. I'm really for bright wheels, especially here with the spectral blue color here on the exterior on the on the team model. So I think the black wheels often look just a little bit too much sinister. What do you think? So please join us in the comments and decide which team are you on? Team black wheels or team silver wheels? Advantage for the estate in the back seats here, more headroom. Yeah, this is a little bit more relaxed right here. So more space above my head. And to the trunk of the estate or the T model. Well, the interesting thing is the length here, a meter of 40 inches would be with the sedan. You might think like, that doesn't work, does it? Well, the thing is that it's deceiving. It looks way shorter like here, but when you close it and then look from the inside, you can still see this area. And that's why there is no real length difference. It's just that you have, you know, like this falling down effect here, but you can, from the inside, load kind of up till here. That's very interesting indeed. The width here in the front, also a meter of 40 inches, it gets a little bit narrower right there. And you also have this battery step here, easily foldable with the estate here, these back seats, that's really nice. But then you have this massive gap then here, stepping down from the battery once again. Hmm. Yeah, so also a compromise with the estate, but of course you have the massive advantage 
that you have a proper height with 65 centimeters or 25, 26 inches. Now what's under the hood here? Look at that. Really cool design here also with a strut bar here and one, two, three, four. Wait a minute. Yes, indeed, a two liter four cylinder engine. 680 horsepower is the total system output because they combine it with an electric motor at the rear axle. It still always has a rear wheel bias. This whole drivetrain system is an all wheel drive, but they dropped from an eight cylinder directly to a four cylinder. And I wonder why I wouldn't have done a six cylinder or something. Yeah, there's you know, emission laws and so, uh, and so on. And they also want to show off their F1 technology because there's a liquid cooling for that battery pack. But the battery pack is just a buffer. It is for performance and the boost function that included is 3.4 seconds in the acceleration figure. And on the Ascari racetrack here in Southern Spain, we can test if the added weight from the battery, how much is it? And how much does it play a role in racetrack driving? How good is the performance? Let's find out. Mercedes C63 AMG, race start. Plop, that's already 100. Wow, 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. And that was uphill, slightly uphill, out of the box. Wow, really impressive. So performance-wise, this one does deliver. Holy moly. All right, everyone, how good is the new C63 four-wheel? We will test it here on the Ascari racetrack in southern Spain. And in front of us is Bernd Schneider, our instructor for the day, legendary German race driver. And well, he is definitely one of the finest German drivers there is, and therefore uh, he is guiding me today that I have, you know, something to show you as a car also in front of uh, in front of us here. Really cool. Then here, oh yeah, the, the the warning system still are active also here on the racetrack, and we can already feel that performance-wise, this force indeed does deliver. Not only at the racetrack. Also here, boost mode, that is kind of programmed into the GPS. They have a special track pace app where they also have um, the track layout and then it gives you an information when you should use this electric boost mode. Then they have the full performance out of the battery. And the thing is, it is kind of seamlessly integrated into this whole drivetrain so that you have this electric motor at the rear axle. Does not mean that it only, just that sound, so it does, not, it does not mean that it only powers the rear wheels, it is basically integrated in the drivetrain and does not change the all-wheel drive distribution. You will always have rear wheel bias with this vehicle. The more you hammer the throttle, the more you lose grip on the rear axle, the more the front wheels will power. Here nicely cutting through the S-turns. And the good thing when I'm having Bernd now here in the front is I can drive faster myself, even though I'm not a professional racing driver, because it's just easier to follow the perfect line. And he, of course, has the perfect race lines in his blood. And steering is really crisp and precise. Bucket seats now play a good role on the racetrack. Here they are an advantage. They're keeping me tighter. Even better, of course, if I would have the micro cut, or they used to call it Dynamica, the microfiber, because that holds me tighter as well. And really good to have a best grip here, also on the microfiber steering wheel for sure. So for a normal car customer, this new C63 generation will feel sportier also with the rear axle steering, for example. However, for a racetrack driver, it's all about weight and it does feel agile. Yes. The interesting thing is we lose weight on the front axle due to the less cylinder, you know, but then again, you gain a little bit of weight due to the battery. So you have a better weight distribution. However, the overall weight is increased by about 400 kilograms or 800 pounds. And that's of course massive in comparison to the predecessor. And that cannot be a good thing on the racetrack. So yes, the car feels great and agile, but for, for a racetrack perspective, the previous generation would still be better because of the, you know, because you just have less weight, but it's a lot of fun. It's a great car to drive, but I have to say, I do feel the weight, and especially here on that racetrack, the Ascari racetrack is kind of vicious and tight. Um, so, and you know, the tighter the racetrack is, the more you would feel that then. Wow, 
I mean, when you're doing this kick down here with the boost, you know, 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, you get a massive boost spike indeed. And you, you already hammer the throttle, but then when you pin it down, you know, just like this very last pinning down of the throttle is a massive difference in acceleration and you feel there is still something left then from that electric boost. Wow, this is really, really impressive. So like the power output to the front is just enormous. So in that respect, this Formula One inspired technology with the electric boost works. Yeah, but the weight thing is just something you cannot get over with. Most people will not, of course, use this car on the racetrack, but here we can do this great racetrack tech test to show you the performance and the performance from the engine is definitely there. The sound, how does it work? It's a sound actuator, so it does not create artificial sound completely, but it enhances the sound that is already there anyway. And in the sport or race mode, you get a little bit more sound than enhancement on the interior. And in the comfort mode, you would have less. So the thing is, yeah, the sound is there. It feels kind of, you know, that you have some decent sound and you hear it. it. It sounds sporty, yes. But from the vibrations and so on, you feel that you're not riding an eight cylinder or a six cylinder. And car enthusiasts do miss that. So this hybrid system here has its advantages and its disadvantages. And it becomes obvious in race track driving and also in road track driving. But yeah, definitely super interesting this ride here. And to me, the steering is really very cool and crisp. And of course, that you always have the rear wheel bias, although you have an all-way drive, then you can just get around the corners in a very, very nice way. In the race mode, which I'm on, everything is tuned. Yeah, this is so nice. Everything is tuned to the... This is incredible with the boost, really. I mean, you, you really tend to feel like, uh, like normally, what I'm doing with the throttle, I would, in most other cars, be really already pedal to the metal. But then again, there's, there's this small threshold, which is still required to have then the full boost, and you really have to dare giving it a little bit more throttle to induce this boost section. And then you're getting yeah, even more push. So you feel that this is a mix of the combustion engine and the electric drive, because sometimes you feel some instant electric power, and then you also have the force in the combustion engine. So indeed, it is a mix. It is, to me, better integrated and works better than in the AMG GT four-door because there the car is also bigger and weight maybe even plays more a role than uh, overall. I wasn't that satisfied with the system there. Here, I think it's more fun in the smaller vehicle. However, if you would ask me, would I go pure electric or pure combustion engine? I think, yes, it is an impressive technology. You can do a lot of great stuff with that. Yeah, but you also cannot de deny the disadvantages. Nevertheless, what an impressive performance we have here, especially as for the acceleration and that boost here. Wow. <laughs> like the moment, like you get from 100 kilometers an hour to, to 200 kilometers an hour, it's just, you know, you can't see this, cannot see the speed here at the moment. Let me just tell you, you now at about 100 boost, 180. That's wow, and that's really, really something here in the mid-size sedan. And now to normal driving of the C-Class here, the all-electric, wait a minute, not all-electric, still in the C63, but we are driving all-electric indeed, because when the battery has enough charge, you can drive it all-electric. And when you have the classic gauge view here, then you also see your electric power meter, how that, you know, goes a little bit higher. And then at a certain stage when you need more power, then also the combustion engine sets in. Still, there is no focus on driving all electric on the longer range. We're just talking in a couple of kilometers, a couple of miles, and that's it. It's just a buffer 
mainly for this high performance driving we've shown to you and also when you start in the morning maybe in the basement garage and you don't want to wake up your neighbors but didn't people buy this car in the intention to wake up the neighbors <laughs> yeah you can decide that uh, on your own maybe it's about the relation to your neighbors you know <laughs> yeah tell me your, your neighbors and car story in the comments below looking forward to that now the combustion on engine got on and interesting because in the normal or comfort driving mode the combustion engine is so silent that you hardly feel the transition between the electric and the combustion engine driving that is something very peculiar very interesting but i mean driving it all electric also feels kind of cool you know feels light and no local emissions then at least but i think it doesn't really make sense to plug in charge this vehicle because the battery is just too small that, that again is not the emphasis in comparison to a normal c-class we definitely feel that this is here a way louder experience in the C63 so um, you're supposed to feel more of the vehicle or also of the car around you but you really have to bear in you know when I would drive a normal seat I was I, I would think like uh, are the windows really all up you know so uh, but here it's a C63 and it's basically in a no wonder here by the way I'm not sure how well you can see that we have the augmented arrows in the infotainment system. So when the GPS is running and you have this, this awesome augmented reality function, then these arrows also show you on the camera image where you have to turn. This can be a helpful feature, for example, also in roundabouts or so. So earlier we already mentioned the stiffer suspension. When the road is even and you're in a comfort mode, it's actually fairly okay but definitely you'd already lose some comfort due to the, the suspension when you have that setup, but you definitely lose um, noise insulation comfort. And when you now think about back to our C43 review, this to me was for the normal everyday driving life, a way better compromise or maybe no compromise at all. It felt very sporty indeed, it has the same four-cylinder engine, so now there's not even like a cylinder difference between C43 and C63. And then the noise installation to me was better in the C43. So overall, the C43 felt like a car you can, without any compromise, move in everyday driving life. Here with the C63, definitely you lose comfort on different levels in your everyday driving life only if you explicitly want that sportiness that we have shown to you on the racetrack you really have to be certain of that so in most cases i think for most customers the c43 will be the better choice even that's by the way the blind spot monitor and when i have set the turn indicator it's flashing with that red triangle so even if money doesn't play a role I would, for driving it normally around, pick the C43. Even, yeah, something come up when there's some like bumps in the road, it's really being transported to your lower back. Plus these optional bucket seats make it even less comfortable. So again, it is about what you prefer. If you really want that rough sportiness, because C63 customers won't care so much about comfort, or at least they can't care so much about comfort. That's thing assistance systems wise everything is available what you also get normally in the c-class so you can also have them in highest spec the active lane keeping with the cruise control and then the car just does its thing and all the assistance systems are working very very well here with mercedes so here for example also when there's some there's now like a slightly left bend ahead here on the motorway and the corrections of the steering wheel are not hectic or something they are very smooth so you're really trusting in the vehicle that all the assistance systems are working very very well you know at about 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour yes this tarmac is kind of rough but still i would think that it, mm, yeah it should be a little bit more silent because even if it's an amg it's still a mercedes you know and 
not so many customers will use it on the racetrack, so they would profit a little bit more from, you know, like a, like a coma surrounding. One more look at the driving modes here, if I feel a big difference. So when I'm in the comfort mode, suspension is rather set on a comfortable note. See here, when I'm, for example, Sport Plus, I feel the ride is getting way rougher indeed. And also the shifting is enhanced then there's just more spontaneous reaction from the engine. But you can also go to the electric mode, and then even if we are at higher speeds, the car tries to run it all electric. And let's see here, there's also notable acceleration possible in electric mode. And it should go to like 135 kilometers an hour or something like that. Then it's basically finished the all electric driving. What all these driving modes have in common is, when you really put pedal to the metal, then you always have the full power accessible. So then you might as leave, you know, might as well leave it, for example, in a comfortable mode, and then get the best everyday driving life feature out of the vehicle. But when you need the power, you can always still <laughs> hit the pedal. And some countryside driving here in southern Spain. Meanwhile, the battery just has the rest buffer left so most of the time driving in with the combustion engine only when we go downhill and the engine shuts off and driving all electric and well the big advantage for that is efficiency indeed so you have an ultra performance vehicle but you can score great fuel economy indeed so even something like six liters on one kilometers or 40 mbg us high 40s mbg uk is possible when you make use of that battery especially when you maybe charge it a little bit before or something like that or when you have gone downhill before or something like that. So indeed, single digit liter consumption figures on the one kilometers is a very realistic one for this vehicle here when you're mainly driving it calmly and cruising and so on. And this is actually possible. But the big question is if you would buy the vehicle for that purpose, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, and also like all the effort put into that and then also with the reduced boot space and so on so it is super interesting that it can be so efficient you know but does it really make so much more sense in a way you know from the whole vehicle concept <sighs> yeah that is uh, that is the thing what is without doubt especially when you go like to the sporty driving modes it has such a great handling and Yes, in the sporty driving modes, you also get some more sound. Um, in the comfort driving mode, you almost feel like you would be driving, I don't know, a Honda Civic Hybrid or a Toyota Pri uh, uh, Prius, um, Prius hi Hybrid, because there's hardly any sound from that engine overall, you know. So, uh, but here in the sport mode then, more is coming to the cabin, for us also in sound actuator working. Um, yeah, and you have a lot of fun driving this vehicle, no doubt about that. So, countryside is also something where this is really feeling at home. Here, also on good roads, you also don't have much comfort losses due to the suspension, which is again rather stiff. These bucket seats also reduce comfort, so the normal sport seats will do definitely better and also save you some more money. So. When I really think about, is it better than the previous C Signal 3 in the agile handling, especially with a rear axle steering? Yes, it is a great driving machine and it has been enhanced in the driving dynamics here in the new generation. It drives just absolutely phenomenal. Better efficiency? Yes, definitely. You can have this mid-size sedan supercar, so to speak, and can also drive it in a very efficient way. That's awesome. But the big question remains, does that all replace an eight or at least a six cylinder? No, it doesn't. And it is this sonorous feeling from, you know, the higher amount of cylinders you get and not this, you know, yeah, half fake four cylinder sound it still does make a difference and 
to me, it is a very interesting technology and hybrid technology makes sense for an everyday budget sedan, for example, like, you know, or for a Toyota Prius or for a Honda Civic, something like this, you know, there the hybrid technology really makes sense. But for a performance car like this, to me, it is still, didn't have to be an eight cylinder, but let it be like just getting a six cylinder. That would have been okay, you know, that the C63 exclusively gets a six cylinder. Or maybe going all electric. But this hybrid thing in between, it has its strength, but also has its weaknesses. And to me, then I might as well pick the C43 and save a lot of money, get more everyday driving comfort. Yeah. Or then maybe go and seek the competition. Or what do you think? Leave me your comments.